So this is going to be a different video. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about me and something that's going to happen in a few days. So I hope you like the video. If you do, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And really, really, thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So like I said, I thought I'd just take a minute to tell you a tiny little bit about who I am because it's so dangerous to let out your real self uh, on, uh, on into the world, but uh, a little bit so we can know each other better. Um, how I come to be into this uh, this situation of reading tarot cards and uh, uh, why I wear these uh, funky uh, rose-colored glasses. So let's see if you like it. So I'm going to read this that I've written for you. This is just a little background about me and the glasses. Uh, as of this video, I'm 63 years old, uh, about to be 64 in a few days on the 27th, so I'm a Scorpio. Um, and yes, all of those things that you may have read about Scorpios does seem to apply pretty accurately to me. Uh, I'm married. I've been uh, with my amazing spouse for 23 years, although we only tied the knot in 2013. And I'm retired, but that plus the horrific events of 2016, the sham presidential election, is the roundabout way that I come to be reading tarot on YouTube. Here's what happened. Uh, after a long, happy life of work that I loved and traveling and living across these wondrous United States, I've lived in uh, six states from the East Coast to the West Coast, and then back for a couple or three of the more middling states, and finally now in the Seattle area, uh, each for three to six years. Uh, along the way, I've been so lucky to have been able to visit, vacation in Europe almost every one of those last 23 years, except, of course, for the last few restricted by, you know, the pandemic. Uh, but on those visits, I've probably been to 15 or so countries and really countless cities and can't wait to be able to go back again and maybe even finally retire overseas somewhere. But to get back to tarot after the election, I found myself so very distraught, actually. Um, uh, and then after a discussion with my doctor, uh, medication actually brought me back down until after about six months and I adjusted. Um, adjusted. Um, I thought my memory had been affected by either the medication or just old age, and truthfully, short-term memory has never been my forte um, really my entire life. But somehow when you're young and full of all that youngness, at least for me, my memory had always been so easy to work around. Uh, for example, if I should say when I wouldn't remember someone's name or face, a quick, uh, hi buddy, or how are you sweetheart or dear, um, that always got me over the hump with really no notice. But being at home a lot, retired, uh, seemed to rust up those useful diversions, and I thought perhaps um, work on my memory was in order. So at about the same time, 2016, cruising YouTube and having a history of significant uh, synchronistic uh, prescience, actually, after having thought about it since I was a child, uh, I landed on tarot readers' channels. The, uh, the first was uh, Psychic Violetta, then Marianne's Revealing Light Tarot, L Lena Rodriguez, Tarot Down Under, uh, somehow Cash Peters' uh, Not Quite Science, and then more recently, but from the start of her channel, Ellie Dreams Down Under, and I think from the start of all those channels, I think I was watching them all from the beginning almost. But but um, the tarot cards really drew me in, and suddenly I thought, hey, memorizing those tarot cards might be just the thing to jumpstart my rusty memory. So I bought a set, and then another and then another, and as to as of today, I probably have more than, I know I have more than 50 decks, uh, as you may have noticed. Um, my memory seems to be a bit better, but not perfect, but it's a challenge and fun. Uh, plus, there's so many uh, incredible, really art-filled choices for the tarot cards, what can I say? Um, but now about glaucoma. Around 2015, living in the uh, Dallas, Texas area, uh, during a routine uh, eye examination for a new prescription because my old one wasn't doing the job, uh, the optometrist found that my eye pressure, specifically in this eye, 
uh, wasn't what it should be, uh, although both eyes are a little affected, and they referred me to an ophthalmologist uh, who, after several annoying sight tests, confirmed the diagnosis, glaucoma. I was officially old. So I chose an aggressive treatment option where they laser the drain duct in the most offending eye. And um, now the usual treatment is a series of eye drops with a few drops a day to reduce the eye pressure. And I do that in both eyes actually quite often. But uh, soon uh, I asked and, and researched really for a more aggressive approach. And that's how I landed on the laser option, uh, which as it turns out is often the first option they use in Europe. So, but it didn't work as it turns out. Uh, I'm a really good healer. Uh, my body seems to try to heal itself and healed the offending drainage duct from the laser surgery. So less than a year later, we moved to the Seattle area and I hunted for, another, for other options. And uh, multiple eye drops were the best uh, I could find. But I also found that good ophthalmologists willing to help me battle this were far and few between. So that's something that we need to work on. But I did find quite by accident that these rose-colored glasses really help sharpen my vision. As a matter of fact, my vision out the front is a little pixelated in areas, and I see better from the bottom. So if you see me doing this or adjusting my glasses up, because these are bifocals, I'm trying to look through the bottom of my glasses to read better. And as a matter of fact, that's why I'm not reading from the screen, and I'm reading from a little uh, tablet that I have below here. You, you adjust. So um, back to that. So quite by accident, I found that these rose-colored glasses really help sharpen my vision. Uh, everyone thinks they're a fashion choice, but uh, no. As a matter of fact, I'm not very pleased with how they look, but at this stage of the game, that's a pretty distant second to better vision. So finally, I came across my current doctor. She had actually been an engineer uh, early in her career, but then had gone back to school to become an ophthalmologist specializing in glaucoma. So it was just a very lucky coincidence that the eye doctor I went to for some new glasses referred me to this ophthalmologist, and I feel very blessed that I found that. Uh, so again, I asked when she began to recommend another regimen of eye drops, what was a more aggressive approach? And that's when I had my second surgery to implant a tiny hair-like translucent artificial duct just above the iris in the white part of the eye. Um, the procedure is the Zen Gel Stent Implant, and that was June of 2021. While it did work for a short time, and I mean a really short time, again, my damn healing fanatical body healed over the darn thing, and it was back to a regimen of eye drops, and that's where I am now. So, of course, I asked, what else can we do? And so now I'll be going in on the 19th of October for a more aggressive procedure where she will kind of make a hole punch um, in a similar location as the Zell Gel, Zen Gel stent, uh, which won't be removed because trying to do so isn't worth the potential scar damage. So it stays with me. It even has a serial number. Um, so this surgery that I'm going to have, and I've got this spelled out here uh, phonetically because it's hard for me to say. As you may have noticed, I have trouble with long words. But this is a trabeculectomy. Google it, trabeculectomy. And it will happen on the 19th. Uh, I'll have to sleep with a very attractive knot um, eye patch for about two weeks and about the same recovery time as the previous procedure. And I had to do the eye patch thing with that too. And then we'll uh, see, uh, pun intended. Um, let's see, so this trabeculectomy, so that kind of brings you up to date on uh, some of me. Uh, I mentioned this, uh, although for the last procedure, um, I was able to record enough videos to cover the time I was recuperating. Sneaky. And uh, plus my viewer count was not, and frankly still is not so very many, uh, but I just feel an obligation to you. Um, I really count on the YouTube creators um, that I watch regularly, and I figure that probably you do too. Um, so that's uh, who I am, sort of, and what I'm up to, sort of. And uh, if you feel inclined, uh, your well wishes uh, or prayers or whatever you do for this kind of situation, short of animal or human sacrifice, yeah, uh, will be greatly appreciated, and um, I'm sure it'll make a difference. Um, I must confess, the only part of this procedure 
that's coming up that troubles me is that they put you under for an hour or so. The last procedure, it was 15 minutes that you're put under general anesthetic. Uh, they put you under for an hour or so, and after the Michael Jackson propofol anesthesia screw up that didn't work out so well for him, I'm a little bit antsy on that front. So, again, if you never hear from me again, you know, otherwise, um, I'll see you again, pun intended. And uh, afterwards, take care of yourselves. If there's any irregularity in your health, in any way, get it looked at. Don't give up until you battle it as best you can. Then be grateful for what you do have, have had, and will have. And uh, so many have had so much more tragic situations in their lives. Uh, I'm so very aware of how lucky I am, how lucky I have been, and how lucky I will be. So that's my story for now. Your friend on another type of journey, Mark. Mark's journey through tarot. So let's do something fun now. Let's do a four card energy read and uh, maybe with, well, definitely with diet at cross finish for each one. So four card energy read, diet at cross finish for each one. So take this minute to just take a deep breath like I'm going to do. Let it out slowly. Put all of that, what I was just saying behind you and uh, get a clear, clear mind. Think about what's important to you, and let's see if we can't come up with something that will um, help you um, over the next uh, few hours for the rest of this day. So four cards, one, two, three, four. Take a minute to relax. Think about what's going on and see if we can't give you a little boost for the rest of your day. Okay, I think that's a great idea. Okay, four card, energy read, to add a cross finish for each of those four. Here we go, four card, energy read, diet it cross for each of those. Here we go. One, two, three, and four. Four card, energy read for you, today. So, here we go. Take a deep breath, relax, clear your mind. And remember, you can stop the tape if you're still with me. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I'll put these over here. And we'll turn this one over, and this will be the signifier card for the Dyadic Cross. So this is the Emperor, and the Emperor is, uh, every, you know, empowered, um, in charge of what's going on, and this is a great big yes card. This is a very good card to get. Okay? We chose number two. This card ugh, is Nightmares. So this is the Nine of Swords, and this is a no card, and so this is really worry and trouble, and um, so you want to... Uh, knowing that this is your card, so you want to make sure that you take some time to consider the situation that you uh, may have asked about for this card. Third card is the sun. The sun is a great big yes card. So this is uh, uh, roses and sunshine. So, you know, you've got sunflowers here. This young uh, fellow is off on a trip of his life. <coughs> and so you chose number three. The sun card's for you. So we chose number four. Okay, this is the Page of Pentacles. And like I always say, the page is the least important of the court cards, but he's bringing a message to court, and this one's of value. And so this is the kernel. This is the beginning of something that court might make of this message. You know, seldom is the page know what he's bringing, but he's bringing something that's going to be considered. It has value. This is a yes card, and this could be the beginning of something really great. Okay? So we'll turn those over. We'll do a real quick diet cross for each of them, starting... With this emperor so if you chose the number one card the emperor this is the card for you and let's see what we can find out about this for you today emperor card number one card for my friends okay the emperor diet at cross the challenge to the emperor for you today is going to be the eight of swords now the eight of swords is feeling trapped Really feeling like you're you're you can't move. You're scared to 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 take a step forward. 
you can't see what's going on. But the fact is that uh, these uh, binds aren't that tight. There is a clear path out. If you just itty bitty step forward, you'd find out that you could move. There's some emotion involved in this water that's represented here. But yes, yeah, so this is caution. Uh, this is a yes card, and it's challenged by the caution of feeling like perhaps you're a little bit trapped. The second, uh, the base of that reading is going to be the Ace of Swords. You know, the swords are truth, justice, uh, rules. Um, and so this Ace, and in particular this sword, is a great big offer of those things. Uh, either all of those things or one of those things for you. Truth, justice, rules. Moving forward, the Ace of Swords is saying, yeah, let's get this done. And the past of this reading is the devil. So this is, uh, you know, lesser intentions. So feeling as if or perhaps uh, you've been following a path that hasn't been as true or as honest as it could have been. Okay. And then the final card in the sky, for this, well, not the final card, but the sky of this is temperance. So, yeah, if, you, if you've come into this issue, you know, off of a little bit of a devilish path, then what you want to aim for here is to balance yourself out. Let's get some temperance into your situation, and uh, that'll help you uh, find your way uh, to this positive answer that we're promised in this signifier card. And then the last card, this diagonal cross for you is the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles, Pentacles is another yes card. It's all your value. It's being in charge and it's knowing what to do with all the value that you have. So just to go over it quickly, the signifier card is the Emperor really being empowered with everything that you need to make things happen because what? You're the Emperor. Now you may be challenged by feeling a little trapped that you can't move, but the fact is that really you can. You just have to squeeze yourself together, let those ties loosen up, and you can squeeze out of this uh, uncomfortable feeling. You came into this with the Ace of Swords Swords, truth, justice, rules, you know how this should go. Perhaps you've been following a little bit of uh, a um, uh, lesser intention path. Let's equal that out. Let's get back on the right track. And then you'll walk out of this thing fully in charge of all your value. Okay? So that is if you chose number one. Put that to the side right here. We'll put these five cards back in the stack. And we'll move on to number two, if that's what you chose. And that's the no card, that's the Nine of Swords. The Nine of Swords is telling you that this is a caution. This is something that's keeping you up at night. This is a worry. Uh, sometimes we worry needlessly, honestly. But sometimes out of worry comes some of the best answers uh, that you'll ever find because you really find yourself going over the situation, trying to determine what is it that you did wrong or what is it that you could do right or how is this gonna work out. I find myself in that situation a little bit right now with this uh, operation coming up. So worry is a signifier uh, if you chose card number two. The challenge to that is going to be the page of swords. Look at that. Truth, justice, rules. Uh, the challenge to all of this worry is actually what you want. You want to ch move your worry over to something more beneficial. To take this no and start to really consider all the uh, good options that you have. The base of this reading, then, is going to be the Knight of Cups. And so the Knight of Cups is coming at you with a big, huge cup of compassion. And uh, he's getting ready to step over this river of emotion and, and say to you, look, take a sip out of this cup. Let's get some compassion into this situation and uh, try not to worry so much. Uh, the past of this reading is going to be the hanged man, kind of being in suspense. And it may be that whatever this issue is kind of puts you off for a minute and, and it's got you worried about taking a step forward. But you can uh, put your worries aside and you can turn this no into a yes. In the sky of this reading is the moon card. You know, the moon card is secrets being revealed and that can be a good thing. You know, just what you need to know might come up. Uh, at the last minute. And certainly you want to know everything you can about whatever the situation is that you're in. And so secrets being revealed can be a very helpful situation. And then the final outcome for this diet at Cross for you is a finality, an end of something. And this is the time when we're going to put a, an end to whatever this troublesome thing is, because we have a promise of, of something better in the future, and we're going to start something new. And so that's always a good place to be. Okay. So that's the no card that you got for number two, but just know with work, you can put that behind you and get off on a new, completely new uh, beat. All right. So we'll put these back and then we'll consider the third card, if that's what you chose. And that's the sun card. The sun card is a great big yes. It's sunshine. It's uh, clear skies. It's uh, being celebrated or celebrating and knowing that uh, the issue that you have is going to have an outcome that will be, um, you know, that you want, that will be celebrated. Okay, so if you chose the number three card, 
the challenge to that sun card that is going to be this seven of coins, which is always wanting to, you know, kind of looking back and say, did I do enough? Is there more I should do? It's some indecision here, but it's indecision that has a, a nice solution. There's plenty of bounty to choose from there. You can always pull off another a pinnacle off that branch, and or you can look back at that bush and say, look, this is a good, healthy situation I'm into. I have something I can use now, and there's something to use in the past, okay? So this sun card is really emboldened by the challenge of the seven of pinnacles. The base of this reading is the Wheel of Fortune. And so this is just recognizing that we're always on this Wheel of Fortune. There's always another decision that's going to be made. There's always something new that's just around the corner. And uh, so this Wheel of Fortune is uh, is usually, I like to think that these cards are always going in a positive direction. They're always moving you forward. The past of this reading is uh, being left out in the cold with this five of coins. So you may have been in a situation where you felt a little dejected, a little left out of the uh, loop, um, but just know, now that you know that this is a yes card, that you know that there's enough, and you know the wheel is turning in your, in your direction, that can give you hope for what's going to happen in the future. And the sky this reading is making decisions. I like to say this is truth and justice. This is, and either one of those is the right way to go. Although justice is blind, um, you know, you can uh, make a move forward. You're going to make a move forward. It's going to be one way or the other, and something's going to happen because of that. So just know that it will be a positive outcome. And then the final card, the likely outcome for all of this for you, is the six of coins, which is, you know, doling out the worth, uh, being sort of in charge of knowing who's going to get what or where you need to put this or that or how these uh, things are going to work out to help you or those that are under your charge. Okay, so that's the third card, the sun card, the yes card, if that's what you chose. And then finally, the last card, if you pick number four, then we've got the page of Pentacles. And just like I said, the page is bringing a message of value to the court. And that's certainly better than an unhappy message. So the page is saying, listen, I've got this uh, for you. Uh, it looks like it's worth looking at. Uh, what do you think we can do with it? And now this yes card is going to help you uh, move forward with some decision. Okay, the page of Pentacles is a signifier for this drawing. The challenge to that page of Pentacles is the Hermit. And the Hermit is great because this guy is taking a moment. He's looking at the path ahead. He's considering what actions he's going to take. And then he's going to take a, uh, this is a wizened old man. He's going to take a careful, wizened, uh, sought after, uh, planned decision. The base of this reading then is going to be the Ace of Pentacles. That's a great big offer of value. So this started out in a positive way. It was moving you forward. And now this is taking you even further. The past of this reading is going to be the four pentacles. Pentacles, great. So they're holding on to your value. Kind of worried about moving forward, uh, not wanting to let go of what you've got. But in fact, if you just take a step forward, you may find that things are working out just right for you. And then in the sky of this reading is the two of cups. These are partnerships. These could be lovers. This could be a relationship. This could be finding just who you need to move this issue along for you. And then the final outcome is the six of of uh, pinnacles and it's again just like the last one i love when the cards repeat knowing that you're in charge of this value and it'll be doled out appropriately for you in this regard so those are the uh, cards that we have today and i hear someone calling me to the door there and i'm gonna have to go but uh, those are the cards we have today and i hope that this meant something for you if it didn't put it aside uh, look at it again later and uh, see uh, if it works for you and if it doesn't that's fine just let it go it's not for you today and there'll be a time when it is i'm mark my journey through tarot tomorrow's another day stop by we'll do it again ciao for now